live from YMSL Studios. Welcome to the Doug Less Report. I'm your host, Bobby Moravia, with a very special guest tonight. We have Daniel D.T. Tao from the Unknowns Organization. And uh, Daniel, you're smiling now, but uh, <laughs> not too much to smile about on the playing field. And it's amazing that uh, just three short weeks ago, we were talking about undefeated season. My, how things have changed. Yeah, definitely. They've changed radically, Bobby, but uh, I think we're going to be okay. You know, we win and we lose together, and uh, we're still all, all rallying around each other. And I think the X factor is that we got a great pitcher, Ralph Hannon. You know, that's indisputable. Um, you know, whether our bats come and they, and they show up, that's a good question. But, you know, we got the pitching and we got the defense, and it's going to make us a lethal team. You know, I find the most amazing stat in your 8 0 start, you were averaging 11 runs a game. And in the last four games, uh, one and a half runs uh, a game. Granted, it, it's against the two best pitchers. Yeah, Jeffrey in the and Andy Sack will do it here. You yeah, know? Um, I mean, going to do it here. Is there any uh, concern in the locker room that uh, maybe you guys were not as good as you originally thought, or just uh, you went up against two tough pitchers? No, not at all. Not at all. We know how good we are in the room, and that's really we know that that's all that matters. You know, whatever anybody wants to say, they could say, but we're very we're a confident group of guys, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna recover. Recover. Okay, well, the good news is uh, you have a, a nice chance this week against uh, Red. Red Nestor and the Talents, too. <laughs> Just what the doctor ordered, you know? Exactly. <laughs> good uh, cure for every team that uh, can't hit or field or lose or whatever it is. So uh, that's certainly a big test. We'll uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Um, we're actually waiting because Sabani got caught in uh, traffic and uh, he's uh, got his own issues he's got to deal with. Unless he's just boycotting the show, uh, that remains to be seen. But um, uh, he's, you know, as we mentioned, Saban, uh, you know, had a drastic uh, doubleheader loss uh, the other day, and uh, he's got a lot of questions that the media has been putting uh, uh, across to him, and uh, we'll see how he responds. A lot um, of controversy in that game. Yeah. A lot of controversy in that organization, uh, within uh, the locker room. There's a lot of tension going on. So he's definitely going to have to make some decisions uh, that are might not be, uh, uh, you know, too kind to some of the players on the team. Uh, but let's start off uh, with your team now. You, you went up against a red hot AB Sacca. Yeah. I mean, coming in uh, on a four game winning streak, and the first game was a typical AB Sacca. You know, no runs. Though that team didn't score. It was the, the fastest game in YMSL history. I'm told one hour and twelve minutes. Very crisp uh, and, game. He, and he pitched a two hitter, and it was uh, two nothing. I guess Ralph also pitched a good game. Ralph, Ralph pitched the gem, you know, kept us in there. They scored one run in the second inning, um, and moved the water bottle, oh. guys. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm new. Who's sponsor? Okay, so yeah, so uh, what was I saying about Ralph? Oh yeah, no, he, he he held us in there, gave up a run, I think, in the third inning, and then. We just couldn't get the bats going. We had two hits, I think, both by Aloni Friedman, I think. Yeah. Oh. So uh, Aloni was, uh, was was the guy hitting for us, and we just couldn't piece it together. We ran ourselves out a couple of innings. I think uh, there were two plays where we got thrown out at the plate. Oh, so wow. that was that was rough too. You know the things that don't show up in the box score. We had yeah. our opportunities. Yeah, well, uh, but AB but AB pitched what a gem, yeah. and 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 they 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 could field there. Yeah, the, oh. the, the youths could field. You know, nah, their team is just built yeah, on yeah. pitching and defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're just not going to outscore too many teams. And uh, but that's Pesco all you need. Great. That's Pesco, all you need in the yeah. playoffs. Nathan Batesh at third base, awesome. was phenomenal. Erwin uh, Cohen. Cohen's uh, MVP uh, type numbers this year. And uh, he's just put it all together. And David Harari with a big, uh, you know, among the league leaders in RBIs now with 21. So uh, he's definitely. Um, and they got a money attitude, you know. They were they, they they were there, you know. They were they were putting their you know foot stomping on our yeah. throats, you know. They kept pouring it on, and uh, that's what that's what good teams do. That's what championship yeah. teams do. So the Utes are uh, are poised. No, they're certainly now they're peaking at the right time, uh, which is a typical AB uh trait. Uh, unfortunately for your team, Ralph had to leave after the first game, yeah. and uh, as most teams do, they usually have a backup pitcher, but there's nobody in your organization <laughs> that ever picked up a ball to pitch, I, I don't believe so. Yeah, no, no, so I think Aloni took it for us, and uh, the rest is history, they just were, they were teeing off, but it wasn't on Aloni, you know, yeah. we just, we couldn't feel the ball, that any, everything just kept, fell apart that, that, that game, but you know, that's the good, that's the good news too, you know, that we, you know, 
fell apart. Yeah. And then we just took only it back one up. game. Yeah, only one game. And uh, but it was interesting uh, in between games. Uh, you had a, a team meeting called by uh, one of the legendary characters Haas. of the league, Morris Haas Sutton. And uh, we're going to have uh, some video highlights of that. But why don't you elaborate exactly what the basis of that meeting was? You know, he was, uh, Haas is enamored with Abe Saka's skills as well. You know, it's uh, safe to say. I think we heard 72 times how great a pitcher Abe Saka is. He's an unbelievable pitcher. He's an unbelievable pitcher. But, uh, you know, that's what he was saying. You know, we, we, you know, we, we face the best and we got to beat the best. And uh, we will, we will down the road. I think he came up with a pretty good uh, cliche also. He said, uh, for you guys to win the game, you're gonna have to score more score runs more. than the other team. <laughs> so uh, Haas definitely uh, you know, came up with some uh, deep thought into yeah. that. And, uh, and I, unfortunately it didn't help in game two because <laughs> you would have to score 23 yeah. runs. But, uh, but nonetheless, I still feel uh, your team obviously is um, in the playoffs, uh, but uh, we're looking for the buy. A buy is something. Don't take that out of a. A buy is something that's a big question yeah, right yeah. now. But uh, you know, all you got to do is get in, and anything can happen. And uh, so, I, who do you play the last week of the year after Dallas? You remember? Yes, um, I don't remember. Because uh, uh, go to the schedule. <laughs> schedule top over there. Was the what? Go all the way to the bottom. Let's go. Oh, uh, oh, Saban Sanity, the last two. Ah. Here we have Michael Saban Solomon in the house. Do I? Yeah, scooch over. Get over here. Ah, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 you gotta be in here. I'm not gonna be in Norm's spot. <laughs> and we have here a smiling Michael Saban Solomon. And uh, Michael, that must have been some traffic. Was it uh, people like. Uh, Trying to jump your car, or what was the story? It was actually, uh, I ran into Moses on uh, Cedar Avenue. He dropped a bucket of chicken wings, and he caused a big delay when he was picking them up in the street. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to have you on the nice show. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. Well, Michael, we were just talking about Daniel's uh, woes with the unknowns. Don't think we forgot about <laughs> your woes. And uh, it took seven weeks, but... Mount St. Bon has finally <laughs> erupted. And the, the lava is, the lava flowing, is flowing, flowing. And, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, I guess, did we even start talking about any of the games? No, we didn't get to any. We were just talking about the unknowns issues. But uh, now that uh, we have Saban Sanity here, uh, <laughs> we could start with you. Listen, there's been a lot of, lot of talk in the organization, uh, a lot of uh, well known and uh, players who, who, rich, who wish to remain anonymous. Uh, are sort of uh, questioning, uh, you know, they're basically saying they have no confidence in your picture and they want you to do something and they want to know if, uh, you know, if you feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, look, this whole experiment of mine this year was a total crapshoot. Um, Bawabe was picked in the 10th or 11th round. I took Douglas, let's backtrack a little, I took him as a pitcher in the fifth round, which turned out to be an utter disaster. Um, and you know what? Luckily, I got Bawabe when I got him. With that being said, he did get us to a 7-3 and three record two weeks ago. Don't forget, right here on this show, other than this gentleman to my <laughs> left, Saban Sanity was the hottest team yeah. in the league. We had a little mishap. We did play the best team in the league, Jeffrey Saka. We had a 5-3 lead in the seventh, and he blew it. The walks finally caught up with him, and it was an epic meltdown. But what was I supposed to do as a captain? Take him out with a 5-3 lead still in the seventh, even though he walked a couple guys? You know what? It happens. I'm not happy about it. It sucks. And I kind of lost confidence, he lost confidence, and I don't know what I'm going to really do. I mean, I asked him at the after that game, do you want the ball for the next game? And he wasn't sure, and I still said, we're still 7-4, and four. if we could get a split out of this, we'll be okay. I gave him the ball, and 
It just we were mentally out of it as a team. We had nothing the second yeah, it was game. It a very deflating uh, game one loss. Uh, but I guess the big question in everybody's mind is, um, I mean, you brought him in. You brought Moses in in the seventh inning after the grand slam. But the, and I'll have you know, he took two balls off his tits. And the guy almost went into cardiac arrest, okay? <laughs> Luckily, one of them happened to bounce off his nipple and hit Ira in the catcher's glove. And uh, we got a lucky out, And but the damage was done. <laughs> but Physically to him and mentally to Bawabe. So right now, uh, it's not looking too good. But the big question is, in everybody's mind across the league, is why didn't Moses get the ball to start game two? Because... I would like one caller to come in, call in now or tonight and explain to me how Moses Eastman is the savior of any team. Don't forget, I lost 12 games with him last year. Correct or not? Yes, you did. Do I automatically jump ship from a guy who got me to, before this week, a 7-3 and three record? No, but I think the big question now is... Uh the walks and, and they think maybe Moses can he's not going to walk anybody you're not going to maybe that's walk that's not a few guys. true because the two batters the three batters he faced that in the seventh he walked one of them and the other two hit rockets like I said off yeah. uh, his body yeah I know but you know we'll see if you so you really basically have not made a decision as far as this week's uh, um honestly it's 50 50 right now I'm getting a lot of calls a couple guys on the team want me to pitch Buwabe, some of them want Moses. So it's just going to be a game time decision. Not a great decision. locker room. Not a great locker room. No, <laughs> no, honestly, we're, we're confused right now. But with all of this being said, we had the lead against the best team. Right. And we could have and we should have closed it down, but we didn't. I'll, I'll mention one other thing. Not that it's in any way my outfield's fault, but... I'm not one for playing shallow at any point because of the weak pitching in the league. But we had bases, they had bases loaded, no outs, and Alley kind of positioned the entire infield to play very shallow. A.B. Cohen hit a grand slam over his head, and it was a great shot, but you don't play the number three hitter to stop a single. Worst case scenario, if he drops in a single, it's a tie game right. and we get try to get the next right. guy. You don't just give up a bomb and get say, the okay, the bases are clear. Yeah. Let's see if we could come back. Right. Especially he was just lobbing it in there at that point to get ahead of the Yeah, pass. forget just, about uh, it. Uh, it was a disaster. Now, Daniel, uh, as a fielder, how how difficult is it to, to pitch uh, behind a pitcher that's always in a 3-0 count, 3-1? It's rough. No, number one thing is the best first strike. You know, you got to you got to get ahead, keep us on our toes as fielders. You know, and when you're consistently working behind, we snooze out there. You know? Yeah. No, that, that's I think that's the biggest problem. Uh, you know, with your uh, with your organization, I think the the team has lost confidence in Boabe, and you know, it's ironic. You have four pitchers on your roster. Uh, Douglas and uh, and Moabe and Ali Marshall and Moses and uh, you know so it, you can really have a deep rotation. <laughs> At least he has a backup though. At yeah. least he has a couple of you got set up man. You got a yeah. backup, a yeah. backstop. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the big question now, I guess, is going to see what what you do the rest of the year. But now you're seven and five. Um, I don't, you haven't clinched a playoff spot. I think eight wins is probably going to close it. Seven is going to be up in the air. But uh, hey, listen, you, you know you got a tough, uh, another tough week this week um, with uh, with the Twins, and uh, so listen, the, Twins can't score runs though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Twins can't score. You know what? With all the, you know, Leah, like you said, I mean, I don't know really what they're doing uh, at the bat, but you know, I believe they're playing without a pitcher yeah. this week, so. Yeah. I mean, I'm playing without Max, but I have Ali to put it short, and I'm going to play around. They're going to lose a, a big-time yeah. position player. So, you know, word is that Eddie Michal might pitch, and if we can't beat that, then uh, would, we might as well. Would you consider uh, donating Moses' services to that franchise for the well, day? Well, if I'm not mistaken, he was part of this uh, <laughs> franchise at one point. And every other one. <laughs> and every other one. And then he went to Haber, and you know what? Now looking back as a general manager standpoint, how 
yeah. good was it of me to lock up all these guys yeah. and now look how it could benefit me. Where wow. I did take a couple bad losses, but if we bounce back and beat these twins this week, which we should since they don't have a pitcher, right. it'll be a great move. So and Rumor has it Dallas is... Um going to put the red on waivers. Any interest in him? Or? If he's on waivers, then yes, I would probably pick him up. <laughs> and I'd probably even go after Cornman at that point and start a social security unit. <laughs> All right, Elsie, you had a new addition on your team this week. Um, actually, our colleague, uh, NRJ, who's scouting in Israel, uh, found uh, a former uh, YMSL guy playing uh, for the Kibbutz Kafilta Fishes, <laughs> Lior Friedman, and told you about him, and, uh, and you signed him. Right. And uh, I don't think he put up any numbers, but uh, he had a little jet lag, but I think he's going to a great, a great replacement for Eddie Hakim. I mean, look, you cannot place replace Eddie Hakim. The guy was unbelievable at the bat this year, and uh, it, it's a shame. However... Lior came in, he hit a very hard, solid shots, but he was also, like you said, right off the plane, right. and he was facing Saka. Right. So it was a tough week for him. I don't think he got on, but he hit five good shots, and now this week I'm changing around the field. He'll be in full time. At what position? At short center. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm going to just basically replace the Eddie Hakim thing. I platooned him last week. But I wanted to get him a week of just yeah. mixing into right. the and that's team. Right, a regular player back right. in the line. And he was great. He threw a couple guys out at the plate, you know, taking a cutoff from uh, the outfield. Right. And uh, he got a great arm. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to platoon the two other guys at second, and he'll be hitting and fielding full-time now. Okay. All right. So uh, you're still uh, you're real confident in your team the rest of the way. I yeah. I mean, uh, look, again, the guy, Buwabe, he fell apart, but we're still, you know, in third place. We lost a rough game to the best team in the league, and uh, all we got to do is bounce back. I mean, you know, we we beat some of the hot teams that are coming up now, like A.B. Sack, and we swept. We swept a couple other teams. We split every time along the way. We swept the youths when they weren't going right. You know, well, I mean, you know how much solace could you take in that? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah. uh, now it, now it, it was still A.B. Saka. It was still the same yeah, guy. Listen, they just like, play the games on the schedule. They can't. All right. Yeah, I mean, so. what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, basically, now your team, uh, have you spoken to uh, Bawabe after the game? Uh, no, I was kind of disgusted, and I didn't want to talk to anybody after the game. Um, his brother did call and, you know, re reached out and offered to catch for him. Maybe he thought it would be a good idea if he caught, maybe oh, he'd keep a... it in line, but uh, Ira's doing such a good job back there that I don't see um, any of that happening. I may get him in a couple innings, just if, we'll see, we'll just see how it goes. I have a couple days to think about it, and, uh, you know, we'll get, we'll bounce back. All right, so let's go over the uh, the games now. As, as we mentioned, uh, your game at uh, at, da at uh, Fireman's Field, um, basically, the uh, Marlins had a strategy going to that seventh inning, not to strict orders, not to swing until they had two strikes. And uh, he walked the first couple of guys, and then, uh, yeah, as we mentioned, A.B. Cohn with the grand slam. Uh, you know, he didn't have to wait two strikes for that. And, uh, and they took the game, and the second game was not even uh, any close. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Marlins had some issues too. They had David Hakim, who got uh, thrown out of the game, and. Uh, and uh, you know, and they replaced him. Let's now. talk about that a little. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, apparently he had some issues with uh, some of the decisions the umpires uh, were was making, in particular Jason, the umpire, yeah. and uh, he basically, uh, you know, told him, uh, you know, to go uh, Cajun uh, fishing or something. I don't know <laughs> what he told him, but uh, he was um, okay, and. Uh, so he was replaced, and they made a great signing. Actually, uh, this yeah. Ha week. How did that happen? How did they pick up a guy who's six foot five <laughs> for a guy who's three foot two? I'd love to know. Well, uh, as we, he was playing in the AARP league yeah. uh, with Chubby Kasab uh -huh. and uh, hitting four seventy two, 
and uh, basically, you know, he was interested in coming back, and he hasn't played since '98. So he's, uh, it was a good, you know, he's a strictly DH, and they thought it would be a good fit. And um, you know, I think uh, I think that's a very big pickup. I think Ray Day is a very good hitter, and uh, you know, so we'll uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how that pans out. He was, uh, you know, he, I think he's going to be uh, a good addition. But again, he's rusty; he hasn't played in five years. And uh, DT, you were probably in diapers last time uh, Ray Day played. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, <laughs> I know him by face, though. You know, yeah. you know. Yeah, but he's a monster, monster hitter when he connects. Yeah, he won't. And uh, you know, hopefully, you know, he gets to first base sometimes. Um, so that was uh, there, but they're sitting pretty ten and two. Probably going to clinch uh, first place this week, and um, and they look uh, now that the offense start to come around. Sammy Tal's on fire, and uh, you know got his average up to four twenty one now, and uh, with Jeffrey Sacker pitching and with their defense, they look like they could be very difficult uh, team to beat. Yeah, they're yeah, forced you to record, know, you, Yeah, uh, they really are. You. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how did you feel getting hit against Jeffrey Sacker with? Uh, you gotta jump on him early. I mean, you gotta try to jump on him early. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta be aggressive. That's the only yeah, way you're well, gonna hit him. Yeah, once you get behind, it's uh, it's all over. Um. So, uh, by the way, all our callers that uh, the lines are open seven three two five YMSL five five. Uh, once again, seven three two five YMSL five five. I'd like to point out that we uh, my hitting off of Saka last week was. You know, my team's hitting was absolutely pathetic. Um, I mean, if you go up and down the list, just looking at the box scores, look how many hits these guys had. Five, three, four, five. Each guy had four, five. Zach Eskenazi went five for seven. Yeah. Michael, the wingman foul is also five for seven. I mean, honestly, I had the most hits on my team for the week, and it was three. Ali had two. Ira... Believe it or not, had two. Oh, I actually got Max, two ADs, huh? zero. Jared, one hit. And you're... Out of battery. iPad just uh, croaked. No. <laughs> so, um... I still got some time out. Cool. Just like your offense. Yeah. A little life left on us. Cool, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. Yeah, caller, lower your radio, please. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not listening to this crap. <laughs> Who is that? You know it. Uh, well, it sounds like Ray Day. Yeah, that's me. Wow, Ray Day. Welcome back to the YMSL. It's been a long 15 years. How are you physically? Did you say it on my back? <laughs> yeah, my back. How do you know about my back? No, no, I said welcome back. Oh, welcome? No, I have a bad back. That's fine. Oh, really? I'd like to mention that Ray Day was a co old co-host of ours at the award ceremony. Yes. Back at the, uh, at the, the center. youth center over there. Remember some of those uh, events, uh, Ray Day? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> That's like one of the only guys there. <laughs> <laughs> say hi to Daniel Towell and uh, say bye to Say hi to Ray Day. How are you, my friend? I miss you. Nice to see you in Vegas last week. Yes. Yes, we should have gambled together. Yes, we should have. So, Ray Day, tell us what your thoughts were when you were contacted by uh, Sammy Towell. I thought it was a phone scam. <laughs> now, like on PLJ, like, you know. <laughs> Right, so, uh... Yeah, okay, I've been around, I've been playing a long time, but by the way, you, you know, you mentioned that I'm old, there's like 25 guys older than me this week. Yeah, but they're all on Dallas, they're all on the same team, so, uh... Yeah, all right. Red, Red too? Yeah, yeah, Red's one of the younger guys on the, on the team. Yeah, well, anyway, I'm, 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 anyway, so Jack, Jack has older than me. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, Nathan, Jack Cat, those guys. Yeah, they're all older. So now tell us, you went to the batting cages, rumor has it. You were seen by our sister station, TMZ. Um, how 
how, did, how was that? We saw, the, you know, I heard there was, uh, you did pretty well on the lob pitches. Oh. But uh, yeah, no one else. The place is closed, and uh, David uh, David worked from uh, just to plug his uh, old sport candle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Situation to be in. You're coming into a team that's uh, in first place and uh, with the best pitcher in the league, so you don't have to face him, and you're you might get a cheap uh, championship uh, ring into your finger. I believe the Transformers was the end of your career because the, at that point you. That was you, the year after, right? Yeah, yeah. You were just well, like. <laughs> I, uh, I rest on the low notes, but we're not here, but no one's counting. <laughs> <laughs> no, you played on one of the best teams with Chaos and you you lost uh, with Transformers. It's okay. You have a lot of rings to your finger. And uh, so we're. Uh, I know you're excited to be back on the field this week. We're excited to have you. And I'm sure your wife's excited that you're out of the house as long as you left her the car. And so, uh, well, no, I, 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 uh, I hear about the league. Sandy Powell uh, told me a little, bit about, a little bit about the team, and it sounds exciting. And I'm excited to join them, and I hope I can help them. I, I, I just think that uh, it's really a no win situation for me because if they win, they were winning already, and if we lose, they lost because of me. So, <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, it's also great you don't have to bring your glove every week, so that's uh, another thing that you don't have to worry about. I gotta warm up a little. <laughs> but uh, Ray, there, we look forward to seeing you on the field on Sunday, and uh, hopefully, we'll see a couple of those monster shots we, uh, we've grown accustomed to. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and who's uh, selling the sodas this year? Uh, it's still the same crew for the last 15 years. Yeah, well, you know. All right, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Ray Day, obviously excited to, to be back. <laughs> yeah. And they could be a tremendous pickup for that I, team. I think it's going to be. I mean, uh, they already have a very tough team. You acquired a bat, you know. It yeah. says what everybody looks to do by the trade yeah. deadline. You're acquiring that hitter that, you know, could only help you. Uh, I feel, you know, he's not going to be a liability in the field. Although the uh, three pinch runner rule is going to come into effect with that. <laughs> With that team between him and Sammy Tal and uh, Fallis Jeffrey. and Jeffrey Sacker, if he gets on, so uh, but nonetheless they got they definitely got the, the stronger. Um, now the other uh, matchup we had to talk about was the Twins and Mabadif and uh, in uh, Dow Avenue, and uh, and the wow, Twins. Like doozy. The Twins' first game was a classic. They finally erupted. They scored three runs in the top of the first. And uh, basically, they scored one run in the next nine innings. They lost in, and amazingly so, it was the fourth walk-off loss for the Twins this year. And uh, I, I'll tell you, it's devastating. That team is, I don't know how they're four and eight, but uh, it's just amazing. And Maya Safdie in the 11th round, pitching unbelievable this year. But that team is just cannot buy a hit. And... Uh, you know, they're just really, if I had to say, the biggest underachieving team uh, we've seen in a long time. Uh, we have a call coming in. Uh, Nathan from Long Branch, how are you? How are you? Good. Nathan Batesh. Oh, Nathan Batesh, how you doing? From the red hot Good. Fountain of Utes. Exactly. Well, um, sitting here with my dad to the red man. Okay. Next year's oh, can we get through this year, please? <laughs> it's still, we didn't even get to the playoffs yet. No, we were just having competition between him and I. Okay. Who's that on the phone? Are we live? Yeah, yes, we're live. We're live with the Doug Les report. Bobby Moravia Saban and Daniel Tal, special guest. Wow, this is a very, very interesting day. Hello there, gentlemen. Yes. Guys, uh, guys, wait, I gotta turn off this thing. I'm watching it. 
Yes. So, Hello? Yeah, Mr. Batash, you there? Yes, yes, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, so... Uh, well, I'm a first time, long time, my first time calling in. Nathan to the left of me wanted to call in, we wanted to say hello to you boys. And uh, we're very excited about this call. Well, uh, Stephen, you must be very proud of your son Nathan. He's uh, turning into an all-star in his second year, playing outstanding third base. Uh, and uh, yeah, he picked very, it up offensively. Very, very, He's hitting over 400. Uh, the kid's batting over 400. He's, uh, the kid's in a few years uh, going to be an all-star. I'm very impressed with him. i got to play with him on the same team. i only got a few more years left, so maybe next year uh, you know, I put a little demand in that i got to be with him. I don't know how that works. And what's this Ray Day coming back? What's going on with that? Well, Ray Day uh, was taken over for... Uh, a gentleman who was uh, sent back down to the minors. So, yeah, who, who went down? David Akeem is on the Baton Rouge Bullies. Uh, uh, got it, got it, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so he's back in. Yeah. Right. Hey, say about that, Daniel, wait for me. I see you on the screen. Thank you. <laughs> so, Stephen, uh, tell us about your team. You seem to be like a real middle-of-the-road, mediocre team that splits every week. When do you we're, think... Uh, uh, we're trying to make it happen. Where, you know, every game is uh, within our reach. For some reason, we're just not closing them out. Uh, we played, I think it was Saban's team last week, uh, that, not the, the, the week before last, and, uh, you know, we had both games in our hands, and uh, we just let it go at the end of the day. We stole the first game, they stole it back from us. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like that's been our season. Mo, uh, Mo is a little bit injured. Uh, he's not 100%, but, um, you know, last week he had to come out of the game a little bit. He hurt his day, he hurt his ribs. I don't think that's what's holding us back. But we gotta, uh, we just gotta come out strong. Leo can't uh, walk anybody. Yeah, Leo Casson had a little bawaitis this week. Walked 15 guys in the doubleheader. <laughs> Amazingly uh, so. Leo, right? What are you talking about, Leo? Yeah, 15 guys he walked this week in the two That's games. The actual stat? Yeah, 15, 15. Wow. Yeah. So he had a rough week this week. I mean, I've seen, I've seen, I've never played with Leo. I don't really. I think it's part of this the second year. Yeah. Year. Second. And, second. Uh, I, I never played with him, and, uh, you know, he has his moments where he's unhittable. Uh, uh, he has moments where, uh, you know, he just has uh, bravery. So we've got to find uh, we've got to find him keeping the mode of just focusing all the time and being in the right mode. And I think he's a, he's a good pitcher when he wants to be. Uh-oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And that's where, uh, that's where we stand. All right. This week you got my body for a very good team. And uh, so definitely be uh, an intro. They're fighting for their big lives. A big week for us, and uh, you know everybody on my team is solid. And now hopefully we can uh, come out with two wins and clinch a playoff spot. I'm sure eight wins should do it. Yeah, definitely eight's probably the magic number. And you guys, if you keep doing what you always do, split every week, you'll get to eight in a couple of weeks, and then uh, anything can happen in the playoffs. Yeah, Steve. guys, you guys are doing a great job, and. Uh, all right, we'll talk to Moses and tell him to pick you next year, the both of you. Yeah. All right, take care. Thank you for coming. All right, so Stephen Matesh, obviously elated uh, by his son's uh, rising uh, stature in the league. And uh, as we mentioned, um, so that game, so then our Twins, like we mentioned, probably the biggest underachieving team. I had him as probably going to the World Series before the season started. And uh, listen, they've been in so many close games and come came up the short end of uh, most of them. So that's their four and eight um, record. I mean, they're probably still giving up the least amount of runs in the yeah. league, though. You know, so if they could sneak their way in there, they can make a lot of noise come playoff. Yeah, time, I think know? they're, they're still... probably uh, going to have to win out to to get in. I maybe three and one. I you know I think maybe one team could sneak in with seven. Seven I wins. Know. It's, I don't know. It's going to be tough going to be tough. The, the, the problem with the Twins, all their, their victories are against the teams ahead of them, which is not going to help their cause because they need the, the top breaks. teams are, you know, not going to help them. So, um, yeah, you know, so it's, uh, every team's still mathematically alive, but it, you know, it's getting, the time is shrinking now. And um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the last two weeks pans out and, uh, and see it. But all I know is that uh, I don't think anybody wants to go into the playoffs. Uh, Sputtering. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So we're going to get now to um, to next week's matchups. And um, we'll start off with Daniel at Memorial 1. 
his unknowns uh, versus uh, Dallas. And as we mentioned earlier, there's no better cure. The, this is a uh, Z pack, as we called <laughs> the Dallas, who's been struggling. <laughs> Um, and they're technically still alive, as we mentioned. They, had, they need to win out, and the rest of the league has to drop out of the league <laughs> for them to have a shot. But uh, I think we predicted this from uh, week one that the age thing would just yeah. catch up to them, and that's about yeah, it. Yeah, we didn't think it was going to happen this fast, but yeah. uh, link, you know, nagging injuries across the board. Uh, they, you know, so it's uh, you guys. I'm sure are looking forward to going up against Red, and uh, I see you sweeping this week. We're pumped about the matchup. We're pumped to get back on track. You know, we can't take anything for granted. Of course not. But uh, we're going to come with the right mindset and attitude, and I, I think we're going to sweep them too. Yeah. And my, Mike, how do you see that? you think Dallas has a shot? I mean, um, uh, you know, there's always a shot. You you know, you never know what's going to happen, but I, I think these guys are just too tough. We got it. They got the youth. Know it. They got the youth, and uh, I probably would uh, go with a sweep here. Yeah. Do you think it, Ralph Hand, as talented as he is, has the, the, the makeup to be a championship type pitcher, or is he? Uh, so you're questioning his mental toughness, basically. Is that what you're doing? Right? You know, we know his, his talents is definitely there. Uh, the question is, can he, uh, you know, withstand the heckling, withstand the, the pressure of uh, playoff? Uh, I mean, it's funny softball. you said that because you know they, they were trying to get in his head the other day, and uh, Ralph was like, guys, if you think it's getting to me, it's not getting. And he showed us that you know he 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 was not he did not unravel. Didn't you guys um, get swept? Yeah, but uh, he only gave up two runs. He only gave up two runs the first the first game, and he left for the second game. So maybe he was just embarrassed and had to leave. <laughs> Couldn't take it. But uh, I don't I don't, I don't think tell. he's good under the pressure. I gotta be honest with you. Physically, he's very good. Yes. Yeah. But mentally, I think he uh, if someone went nuts on him. Talking to him in a playoff game, heckling him, someone like Maurice Haber, making yeah. him crazy, he, the guy would fall apart at the seams. Yeah, that, that's my only question with him. Uh, the rest of the... Uh, <laughs> uh, and the, the, the age of your team is another factor, uh, you know, as young... We're young, we haven't been there. You know, I was on Tiger Blood last year, so, you know, we didn't even win. How many games we win? Two? Uh, Do you know, uh, their, their team kind of... Reminding me now of the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, a lot of great yeah, talent, young talent, but very young and just not quite there yet. They start off hot. Look at the finals yeah. going on in the NBA, and then uh, you know, falling apart a little. When yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Great players going to be in the league a long time. Some of those guys, the first year, how they're going to handle the you know playoff situation. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's no doubt about their uh, their talent but let's you know let's see how in a short series what could happen but I think uh, this week you're definitely going to sweep and uh, that's going to put the uh, caboose on uh, on the Dallas uh, for, uh, for the year now Memorial we sweep, do we do we clinch the bye um, no no because Utah the, Utes, right. the Utes uh, have the tiebreaker on you yeah. Uh, now Memorial Two, you have the Marlins at uh, ten and two versus Project X, another team fighting for their lives at four and eight. And we're hoping uh, Maurice Haber, uh, we get to hear from him uh, because uh, you know there's a lot of issues he wants to uh, talk about. And um, this is definitely uh, you know their team that again has to go win out. Probably the Marlins, for all intents and purposes, have probably clinched uh, first uh, first place. Um, I don't know. That's going to be the debut of uh, Ray Day. Uh, I think um, the big question is can uh, can. Project X find some offense, and uh, and if Max Shadid can you know uh, pitch a couple of consistent games, and uh, I think they're going to split. I think they'll get one one win. And uh, but you know to to their credit, Project X has been in every game and has lost a lot of heartbreakers. Yeah, uh, I see a split here. I mean, as good as the Marlins are, I just don't see uh, them. You know, they don't have the greatest offensive team. They're all very solid, but, you know, they could be held down by a good pitcher, and Max Yadid is a very good pitcher. So I don't see the Marlins scoring a ton of runs. Yeah. Uh, I see a split here. What do you think? I don't either, but I, got a, uh, I, I, got a, I see a split also. I see a split. So. Okay. As a matter of fact, I think we have the president and GM of uh, Project X on the phone. Maurice Haber, welcome. Hey 
guys. How are you, Bobby? How are you doing? Uh, we're doing good. Nice to hear from you. Thank you, thank you. I came out of, uh, I wanted to finally say that I've been ducking the media for four weeks, but now that uh, Stavon has lost four in a row and my team is looking good, now I can speak to you guys. Well, it's only two in a row, actually, Savon's lost, but... Uh... Oh, it feels like four in a row. Oh, I'm sorry. It feels like four. <laughs> Thank you for donating Moses to my team. It really... I have to tell you that I was that, but Michael, you know, I, I love you. I love you for how many years. I have to figure out how to stop you. I don't want to how to stop you after you swept us. So I came up with this plan, and he fit into it, so I'm very happy. Well, thank you. 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 I really appreciate that. Considering that you're four and eight, <laughs> and everybody on your team is batting under 300. Oh uh, my god, you can throw that I'm batting under you and take off those glasses because that doesn't mean anything and you know that. And listen, I believe you owe me a Papa John's uh, after <laughs> after this <laughs> week, <laughs> that'll be secure. I mean, let me automatically help. There is a possibility that I will get a Papa John's pizza if I run out of the table and you don't want to go. There is that, that possibility, so I am praying for that. I agree, and I think we'll have this conversation Sunday afternoon. Maurice. <laughs> yes, yes why don't, you, why don't you give uh, your friend Savon here a little advice, uh, knowing that uh, last night you pulled Balabe out of a game. Oh, wait, wait. Are we allowed to speak about other leagues on, on this show? I thought this was strictly a minor or something. No, we're allowed to talk about the minor league, so... <laughs> Okay, so, uh, you know, we've talked about it for a few years now. Is there a future for you as a pitcher? I think you're going to make an outstanding pitcher down the road. I have to tell you, I've been thinking about it, and uh, the only way I can pitch is if I am uh, mentally ready and I have the team behind me. But sometimes being a captain is very hard because I don't want to have anybody looking over my shoulders. It's different when somebody drops me to pitch. Uh, than me being a captain and coming in there and saying, I'm going to be the pitcher, and you, and you, and you see these guys, they're not patient enough for, uh, you know, to, to work with a guy like me, like we did with Andy Stanker one year, and he became an all-star. Right. So, okay, so... Well, uh, Maurice, I see... talk about my team, if you don't mind. We're talking about everything except my team. Is there any way I could have a few minutes to tell you about my team? Well, I'm actually thinking maybe you should go back to the Tahina League and get... <laughs> You're, uh, you're practicing with those guys. I mean, you're hanging out with them all weekend, eating and smearing tahine on every one of them, and maybe they'll uh, let you pitch at them. You could probably strike a few of those guys out. Yeah, but the tahine league, first of all, I don't know if you know, it's upgraded. It's now called the Bakakanu League, and uh, they acquire a lot of teams. I don't know if you've heard that uh, Jack acquired a team. I think Jack Abadi acquired a team. That league is uh, becoming a very good league. I think Michael, I think the band from 10 years is up. I think you can run that now. <laughs> well, I, I would consider it maybe if you could get me on the, uh, you know, one of your teams, I would love to come play. Uh, you, have to, you have to have a lifetime supply for all uh, So if you're ready for that before the game, then, then there's a shot. You know I will always bring the falafel. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so uh, give us the run. you got two weeks left. You're four and eight. Uh, you know, you, I know you had high expectations for this team. Do you feel it underachieved, or you just think you had some things, uh, some bad luck losses? Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, um, the group of guys that I have, I have to tell you, I will tell you the truth, I, I'm a good evaluation of power. I know you guys think that uh, the Nathan Wolf pick was horrible, and of course, you know, I'm looking at that, but I, I get the pulse of the team, and we play two very well, uh, very well played games. Uh, pitching defensively and hitting is unfortunate. Came down to one play uh, that we lost, or else we would have swept. We lost as a Norman uh, general coach. We lost a lot of close games. I still think uh, greatly that we will make the playoffs. In fact, I'm so sure I'm going to put out a guarantee that we will make the playoffs this year. And if we do make the playoffs, we're going to be a tough out. We do play. Um, Two uh, very good teams, actually. 
Jeffrey Zaka, is on a roll, more disrespected them, they're a great team, we're not taking them lightly, but uh, we're in playoff mode right now, and uh, we're coming out strong this week, and we're going to hope to uh, get a win tonight, and we're going to be looking at the Well, the good news is that the Marlins really have nothing uh, to play for. And uh, so, oh, wow, then you got the week after that, you have the Twins, who's also fighting for their lives. So that's going to be a great matchup next week um, if you guys can, are both fighting for that for a playoff spot. Rumor has it that uh, if Jack Cowell loses two, who does he play this week? Save on Yes. Yeah. Okay, rumor has it if Dave on does his job, which I don't know if he can, that uh, Jackie Cowell will not even show up in the last two games. Uh, just so you know, I have inside information. All right, well, that's interesting to know. And uh, regarding that Jeffrey Sack and I'm playing for anything, for some reason, uh, most teams like to play and beat me for some reason, so I'm sure they'll have their full team and they have a lot to play for. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't think there's a player anybody enjoys more beating than you, so everybody brings out their A game. I'd like to get a shout out on a couple of guys on my team if you don't mind. I have to tell you that the first time I played with Carlos Sabati, and I have to tell you this guy is one of the best teammates I've ever played with. Um, he's hitting great, he's a team player, he's an all-mannered guy, he wants to win. Uh, guys like that don't go on trees, and I'm very happy to have the guy, and I hope we can win uh, to get into the playoffs because I never spoke to him. He's a better teammate than Sammy Sutton? Uh, I think just a tad better than Terry's yeah. Okay. All right, Maurice. Uh, well, we wish you luck the rest of the way, starting this week against uh, the Marlins. And, uh, you know, hopefully... Go to Montana. Go to Montana. I want to be Michael. I appreciate that. Salam Aleichem. <laughs> okay. Salam Aleichem. Salam Aleichem. Thank you. Thanks for calling in, Maurice. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. So, uh, oh, Maurice with his famous uh, yearly guarantees. <laughs> And, uh, and then he we'll quickly takes a yes. back. Even if we don't do it, we're yeah. going to be a tough guy. Yeah, gotta... We're going to hear from him, and uh, he's going to be cursing out Carlos's grandmother in Mexico <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, my prediction. So, um, so that's a uh, you know, so that's uh, going to be an interesting match. So we now we'll talk about his. I, we mentioned we, uh, he's going to split in, uh, against the Marlins. Uh, now Memorial Three, your matchup versus the Twins. Um, very interesting matchup, as we mentioned. Meyer might not be there. I guess Eddie Michon's gonna have, you know, guys gonna be moving around, gonna have to pitch, and um, I don't know who the uh, who's gonna play short uh, for that team. It's gonna be interesting to see. Maybe your buddy Malak, but I don't know. <laughs> well, he's used to getting grenades rolled to him in uh, <laughs> Lebanon and throwing them over the border over there, so. Well, the twins, the tw twins are having a tough time scoring runs, and you know. Yeah, but, but Saban Sandy is in disarray. So yeah, I mean, I could uh, go either way here, and you know what? I don't think they're gonna have such a tough time facing the pitching arsenal that I'm bringing this week. But the truth is, my prediction, and I'm not gonna be crazy about it. I see a split, even without a pitcher. But um, you know, that's just what I see here. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, it could be some. Crazy ugly scores. Who knows what's gonna? Could be some long four-hour affairs with the walks and the counts. So, uh, but I know certainly uh, you know your the, the Twins need it much more than uh, your team does. So we'll see what happens there. Now uh, Meadowbrook uh, is Mabadif versus Insane, and this Mabadif team, I'll tell you, they're a lot better than their six and eight record indicates. Uh, they got some guys that uh, putting up. Great averages, and uh, you know Mikey Shalom, I guess, just does well enough to get the job done. But between Soli and Elliot Patesh and Mo Kassin, and uh, there's a lot of guys. Um, Eliezer is not even hitting yet, and uh, a Avi Dweck, uh, a very very deep team, and Leo Pichotto. We, we didn't even we faced this team when they didn't have any of their guys. You know, yeah, we got, yeah, you're lucky. We got just two wins out there. Yeah. You know? Uh, they're not that team. They're, no. they're, they're, they're this team on paper that's really strong. You know, it's a very good defensive team and a lot of firepower. It's only another year hitting over 500. Um, so, you know, I think this team, another team that could be extremely dangerous. Uh, but, you know, you know Insane just. Playoff teams don't want to see them in. Yeah. You know, that, this is the team that we don't want to see in. Yeah. Insane just finds a way to win one game every week. I, I'll tell you, they're just like somebody watching over their shoulder. They did. 
you know, the crazy situation they end up winning one, losing one, but uh, so um, yeah, I, I see a split here. These are two very good teams. Um, Mo Shammah's team is actually very good. Yeah. As much as we said the yeah. whole season that they were boring, this and that, you know, I wasn't here the week after I played them, and I kind of, I think I remember saying that they were yeah. weak, and I guaranteed a split. But you know what? I I got to hand it to them. Very very tough team. I like a Mabadev sweep here. Whoa! Yeah. Man, the towel yeah. going. I gotta on. be bold. It's my one time on the show. <laughs> yeah. I gotta do something to shake people up. Yeah, uh, I would not be surprised. You know, listen, it's not you know it could happen either way. But I, if there is going to be a sweep, I agree it's going to be Mabadev. And this is their actually uh, their final games of the year for Mabadev. So uh, you know, uh, I'm sure. Right, they almost. I, I they don't have a buy in. No, they they, 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 they probably have they have to at least win a game here. Oh yeah, because if they get swept, That's, most likely that they may yeah. not. And make. if they sweep, I think they, you know, most likely clinch a playoff spot. If they win one, they're probably gonna have to sit back and root in the last week of the season. Mm. So um, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. But I think, like we said, it's like they're gonna be a dangerous team to, to reckon with uh, come playoff time, and. Um, so you know that's it for uh, for this week. And uh, Michael, we uh, we hope you get uh, your situation resolved. And uh, and really, the truth, I hope Olave turns it around. He's one of the great young kids in the league. I would like to uh, get a stat at some point on actually how many walks he gave up for the season. If we could possibly do that in the off week and discuss it next week as a topic. Because I think we're yeah, breaking the whole anybody, anybody, anybody. I was thinking an abacus for this one. <laughs> broke the spreadsheet when we tried. So. I think it's somewhere. It's got to be in the fifties, right? I was. Well, know. there was more than ten last week alone. So I'm. Well, how many games? I mean, you know, played, we're played 12, twelve. Twelve games. Oh, that's got to be over sixty then. He's averaging five a week easily. Right? Uh, you know what? We could go to the box scores while we talk and. Uh, Let's start. Let's just see what went on last week. It's a big question. Isn't it? Three hours. <laughs> so you gotta go and add them all up. <laughs> Nine the week before. Nineteen in the last two weeks. All right. Which so is kind of wretched, if you ask me. But are, they, uh, are they squeezing them, or what, what's, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing no, at this point. This is, but what I hear from uh, you know some of the players, the pitches aren't even close. A lot of times they're even rolling, being rolled to the plate. They just loses the zone. Completely yeah. lost the, the confidence. And some players are saying on the team that he doesn't even want the ball. No, I mean I, mean, I don't like think that's the case. No, like you know, I, I think he was like almost waiting uh, to. Going to be a great rescue. story if he turns it around. I think a bigger story if Moses turns it around and takes him to the championship. <laughs> that be, that the would. only thing I see him turning around is the Porter House <laughs> State that is sitting in front of him <laughs> to get to the more grilled side. Uh, <laughs> just about it. <laughs> but, uh, what did Moses say when you gave him the ball? Did he want it or he was... He was actually sitting on the bench teaching my son uh, some sort of Hebrew lesson <laughs> and I just went... Ape shit. I don't know if anybody <laughs> reported this in, but I went absolutely crazy after the Grand Slam, and I I just lost it, and I screamed, Moses, get on the mound, and he looked at me like, I don't want to say a deer in headlights, <laughs> I want to say an elephant in headlights, because, uh, you know, he, he didn't know, he couldn't believe, number one, that he was actually getting the ball, and I just screamed. He looked at me, and I said, "Do you want to pitch? Yes or no?" And he got up, and you know, he whatever. How many uh, warmer pitches I'm giving? But he said he was ready after about three. So <laughs> he pitched all year. He's three. No, he, I had him pitching, you know, before the game and during the game and uh, everything like that. So uh, awesome. I mean, he's a veteran. Uh, you know, he, he's he'll be ready. It's just uh, you got to be careful when he takes the hard shots off the body. He can't really recover. So maybe your son that might have learned a couple of good halachot that if <laughs> anything came out of that. So. Yeah, he uh, asked him to start growing his payas a little longer. And <laughs> All right, Daniel, and uh, hopefully this is the week the unknowns uh, turn it around because uh, you know about the Douglas Jinx. Uh, you know, usually the numbers... Uh, don't pan out for the guest after uh, <laughs> appearing on the show. So uh, try to break the trend. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, you guys, uh, 
are going to be in the playoffs, no question about it. But hopefully, uh, you know, you make some noise, and I'm sure uh, all your team is, uh, is watching and uh, yeah, tonight are going to be uh, cheering you on, and hopefully, uh, Haas has some more words of wisdom. <laughs> We gotta just score more runs. Uh, yeah, I'd we'll like to right. say I yeah, think we'll right. I think two weeks ago we were doing an average of how many runs these guys were scoring, yeah, and we, they were in the ninety we one. Runs. Well, we they scored five it. runs in two weeks. Yeah, we talked about it. They were averaging one and a half runs a game the last wow. four games, and they were averaging eleven runs the first eight games. So, granted, against AB and Jeffrey Sackler, but still, it's a major, uh, major difference. Um, so that's it for this week and uh, you know we're coming down to the final two weeks of the regular season and then all the fun starts in the postseason and uh, I'm sure it's going to be another exciting uh, YMSL year and uh, good luck the rest of the way guys thank you good night